Well, we're doing something different today, so let's uh, watch this video then. There is a point of so-called Christian, not only Christian wisdom, to which I'm totally opposed. I'm generally opposed to wisdom. I think wisdom is the most disgusting thing you can imagine. Wisdom is the most conformist thing you can imagine. Wisdom is this, you know, whatever you do, a wise man will come and justify it, you know. Like, you do something risky and you succeed. There will, come, there will be a wise man who will come and say something like, I don't know, we in Slovene, we have a proverb, maybe you have a similar one, only those who risk profit and so on and so on. Let's say you do the same thing but fail. A wise man will come and he will say something like, in Slovene we had a vulgar saying, which says you cannot urinate against the wind or something like that. You know, this is wisdom. Whatever. What I'm curious to know from you, Shash, like how true is this for you? Because I know for me, like this is definitely the case. Like, I mean, previously, like I've never thought about wisdom in this way, but like only until like I came across this idea, this was something that I was like, okay, yeah. So wisdom is definitely, I guess, a form of like cognitive bias in some sense. Interesting. Of wisdom as a form of cognitive bias, which is basically whatever you do, you can justify it or say yeah yeah this is completely normal this is the way things are like this is amazing because of wisdom you can just make it sound poetic and beautiful and yeah. justify it that way i never thought about it that way but after zizek brings it up and the the word you added cognitive bias i definitely see how it can be cognitive bias but at the same time i think what he's assuming here is a sort of dichotomy of that which is correct versus that which is incorrect or right versus wrong and that's why uh, there is a need to justify. Whereas if we go by the assumption that nothing is good or bad, everything just is this sort of non-dual way of looking at everything, then you can basically turn anything into wisdom because there is no correctness or wrongness. And hence, there is no uh, bias of any sort that's like pushing us towards one or the other. Mm. If everything is does that make sense so so because so you're saying because um he there's an assumption that there is a right or wrong decision that leads to it leads to um this sort of response that she's like saying but what you're saying is perhaps if we like eliminated the idea itself that there is a wrong or right answer then there's a lot of actual there's a lot of wisdom to be gained there is that right exactly there's wisdom to be gained from anything and everything and on one hand, that could seem like, wait, what? What kind of a stupid idea is that? Like, what's the point of that? No, there is mm. definitely a right and wrong. And uh, obviously, we want to promote good wisdom versus bad wisdom. But mm. I think, again, creating that dichotomy, if we took this one level further, thought about this a little bit more, creating that dichotomy and limiting ourselves to saying this is good wisdom and this is bad wisdom. That, that's why he's sort of opposed to wisdom. Uh, or, well, he just said wisdom, not good or bad. That's another layer I'm adding. Mm -hmm. But if we were to keep it open and have a non-dual way of looking at things, then that just opens up the door to so many more ways of learning from anything that is being said. The mm -hmm. most stupidest thing someone could say, again, I'm putting a label, but that if we unlabel it from saying it's stupid or it's dumb or this is not the right thing, then there is so much more that we can extract out of that or make meaning out of that. I think that's the job of a philosopher. A philosopher is essentially a meaning maker. It, he, the philosopher takes one thing, whether stupid or wise, or those just could be the two sides of the same coin, and twist it around and spin it around and make new meaning out of it and give it another uh, way of looking at that same thing. And I think when we do that, that has a profound effect in the way we become, the way we approach the person, because no more do we say that, oh, like this is kind of fuck, bias, fuck this guy. We're more open. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Coming from a place of curiosity, that could also mean this, and it just opens up the doors to new possibilities. So mm. that's my take on why I'm not opposed to maybe wisdom. Mm. or this Interesting. Open idea of not labeling things as one or the other. I, I have an interesting challenge though, which is, so, uh, so, I mean, I, I agree in the sense to the degree that uh, perhaps if we remove the labels of right or wrong, that allows for some sort of interesting insights to arrive in terms of decision-making, right? Um, an example is like, if I was to make, so like, I guess a personal like, anecdotal example is that like, 
before maybe two years ago, I was like trying to figure out what to do with my law degree. I was like, I don't know what the right decision is. I spoke to like hundreds of people about it. Cause like I worked in a call center and I was asking people for advice. Like, you know, what do you think about this, this, this? And I, I got like lots of interesting insights from people, but it never really gave me, uh, a, it never really helped me create the right decision or, uh, or make the right decision rather. But again, like, here again, you're assuming that there is a right decision. Yes, exactly. I'm, right. saying, I'm inviting you to unlabel that and stop yes. seeing it as right and wrong. Yes, absolutely. And then I'm and, asking what could happen. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what happened in this decision because I, one of my men, one of the people that I know in my life, a mentor of mine said exactly the same thing is that you're assuming that there was, there is a right, a right answer. When in fact, you don't even know if that is the case. And like, I think of like this Kierkegaard quote, um, which I, <laughs> which is like, a, 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 a I love quite a bit. And he says, um, he says, uh, to get married, you will regret it. To not get married, you will regret it. To get married or not to get married, you will regret both. And I see that see it as like that same idea in terms of that, uh, in terms of that that perhaps this idea of rightness and wrongness is inherently false, and that there isn't there. But at the same time, like with all that in mind, and even though that has sort of served me, like I also would like to challenge that itself because perhaps there are decisions that are correct. There are decisions that are right. And by, by perhaps people being put in these tough decisions, we are, and saying, you know what, like there is no such thing as a right idea. There's no such thing as a wrong idea. That itself could be in a wisdom that um, the, the exact wisdom that Zizek is talking about. And that, that in itself is, I guess, a, 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 a disgusting to use Zizek's uh, right. terminology. There's, there's irony there. We are yeah. sort of, like he said, you could just say that what I just said is a bunch of wisdom and it's bullshit. And I agree it's bullshit, but that's the irony again. That's the meta layer of irony that even I know it's bullshit because inherently by saying that there is no right <laughs> or wrong way and you should listen to me, I am somewhere, well, I didn't say you should, but I am somewhere creating a right and wrong saying like, oh, the way I'm thinking to say that there is no right and wrong is the right way to go, yes. which is uh, maybe a little bit uh, hypocritic. But that's where Zizek's philosophy gets super interesting because that's yes. what he's saying. Ultimately, anything you say, you could pull, spin it off as wisdom or whatever, and that's a bunch of bullshit. So be careful. Yes. I mean, let's see what he's... I mean, I'm interested to see what this guy's... I forget what he says after this. Whatever you do, a wise guy will come and... Uh, and we... You know, but, but, I mean, but it's so interesting that a, um, a philosopher should be against wisdom. We all are. When your Kierkegaard knew this. Kierkegaard was anti-wise man par excellence. Wisdom is pagan. Should be liquid. Okay, no, no, not going to my Stalinist stuff. But what I want to do, once I made a mental experiment, if you don't believe me. Uh, let's take, it's I will point. say something. So, so something before he goes on the example, the, the thing that I thought was interesting is that he says philosophers are anti-wise guys, so to speak, which... Um, I mean, although no, not although I'm, I wouldn't say like have any philosophy, philosophy training or like gone to like school for philosophy or whatever. Like you would assume. My assumption was is that because philosophy is about the love of wisdom, that uh, in some sense that philosophers are inherently wise people. But he's he's saying uh, he's not saying that. In fact, he's saying the opposite. So, okay, two layers to that. One, that philosophers are wise people because they love wisdom. I would actually disagree. Uh, in Plato's Symposium, there's a character who says that people who are wise, uh, or, or not wise, sorry, philosophers, not people who are wise, philosophers are between ignorance and wisdom. And because yeah. they are between them, they're not one or the other. They are not wise. That's why they have a love of wisdom. And that love of wisdom is eternal. They will keep on loving it yes. because it will never get to wisdom. And that's Plato, it's not Plato, so Socrates' entire sort of philosophy, right? That yes. I don't know what I don't know. And because yes. I recognize that I don't know what I don't know, that's why the oracle of whatever that place was says that you are the wisest man. Yes. Because you acknowledge that you don't know Yes, exactly. What you don't know. Whereas other people are like, no, I know it. I'm a wise man. But this guy was saying, no, I'm not wise. And that made him somewhat of a philosopher yes which because he was a lover for knowing more just because he didn't he knew that he didn't know. yes he knew he wasn't wise yes 
and and that, that is the precise reason why he is the wisest of them all in in that story like with the oracle is that because he knows he is in fact he doesn't know anything but everyone around him thinks they know everything or knows some things that is in fact the reason why he is the philosopher king in some sense or like the person that is the wisest and Which that's is- kind of what's happening with Zizek. In other words, he's going along, along the same idea, which is that, uh, that, you know, no one's really wise. That's what he's really trying to say. Mm, yeah. and, and the weird thing is even that could be said that, oh, that's wisdom. Like what you just said, there, yes. that wisdom is bullshit is also wisdom. So is there anything that's not wisdom? Yes. I don't know. Well, I guess, I, yeah, I think that's an interesting point where we can sort of, maybe we can answer that question at the end or something like that, because. Let's um, see what Zizek has to say. Yeah, yeah. If he catches himself doing it. Yeah. I will say, I don't know how to say it. I'm too ironic with all this pathos, you know. Why are we, uh, why are we running after this uh, miserable earthly pleasures? Think about eternity. The only satisfaction is eternity. If I were to say it with proper pathos, it would sound a deep thing to say. It okay, did, it sounded. It now did. let's yeah. say the opposite. Why run after the specter of eternity? Carpe diem. Grasp what you have here. It sounds wise. Now I will say the third option. Why be caught in a contrast between eternity and temporary existence? The true wisdom is to see eternity in fleeting temporary pleasures. It is wise. Then I say the fourth variation. We are forever condemned between the two. A wise man accept this. You know, whatever I say, that's my point. You can sell it as a wisdom. So, I mean... I don't think he explicitly answers the question here, but I think uh, it basically did, right? Like I was trying to say, like actually implicitly, yeah, yeah. Between those dualities, he first said, like, let's say, like, complete eternity, you know, spirituality, transcendence, and whatnot. Yes. That's with On the yes. other hand, fuck this eternal shit. I I want to just be in the moment, like in the body, blah blah blah. Yes. That's wisdom. Or maybe saying, fuck these two ends, let's be in the middle, or let's find yin and yang, this in that and that and this. That's also wisdom. Or let's just like have none of these. Mm. That also is wisdom. And then all of these things combined, saying that this is all just a bunch of bullshit, can also be wisdom. Mm. Yeah, so I mean, this, so I mean, as like, I guess, quote unquote street philosophers, this is like, I think, a problem like a good problem to have, but it's a problem nevertheless, because uh, in terms of like gathering knowledge, understanding thinkers, um, speaking with people, getting like wiser together, like all of these things like are assuming that we're building like a knowledge base to help us answer bigger questions, right. Or to help us create new narratives or whatever it is. Right. But like inherently here in the video is that, that because wisdom in it of itself is sort of like this thing that is, uh, it, it can be used to justify any action, anything, right? Then does that mean that the pursuit of wisdom is inherently something that doesn't lead to an outcome that can get you wiser? Is that, does, I'm not too sure if that makes sense, but like, does, is it like the, the pursuit of wisdom futile in that sense? See, that could also be said is wisdom with, with, with what he's saying, but on that mm. note, in that sense, that's why I guess people say like, fuck philosophy. That's why liberal arts such as philosophy are not being as pursued as other fields say, let's say, such yes. as business or engineering or uh, medicine and whatnot. Because people think, oh, philosophy is just some abstract bullshit. It's a bunch of, you know, crap that will get us to no place. Yeah, that's basically yeah. what I'm hearing. And it makes, it, I, I guess that could be true that I'm realizing that uh, just a lot of intellectualizing and philosophizing and just going round and round in circles around that idea is some form of intellectual masturbation. Yes. And if we do not bring that back into base reality, I'm taking a more utilitarian perspective now, but if we don't do anything about that insight, so to say that we gather, then what's the point? What's the point of that wisdom or pursuing that philosophy? Yeah. But yeah. again, another wise man could come and say that, Oh, that's utilitarianism. You know, that's not what life is about. And everything can just be an end in itself. Not a yes, yes. End. Yeah. Well, why, why treat everything as if it is if something for the greater good? Why not every action as, as good as every other action? Like, yeah, for sure. Um, but like, 
I think that's that's an important point because like you said, right, like philosophy is inherently something that is uh, uh, not inherently, but philosophy can be seen as like a subject, like you said, sort of just like intellectual masturbation. You're sort of like, you're just thinking about things that may actually not even produce value or just may, may not be practical. Um, and I think like, this is why I think this video is quite poignant is because it, it really hits on the, it hits on the point that like, at the center at, at the root of everything it like it has to be practical and applicable to our, like our lives and like like it has to answer the so what you know what i mean like the like what you say Joshua, well like, i think what? philosophy helps us think about the so what where it doesn't or maybe where people don't including maybe me is the now what yes because like i'm speaking about yeah this is what it is and this matters because you know blah 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 and yes. this is the so what but then oh and that then then like you know we come intellectual masturbation is done and then we go back to the mundane to the everyday yes not really doing much about what we just sort of gathered or explored yes right? it just is transient it goes away it flies away mm. which again could be like oh the transient nature of life we're just embracing it why does everything need to have a use yeah. why does everything need to be turned into action yeah but on the other hand the other mm. argument is that no 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 like if the inherent point of life is let's say progress or uh, or lessening of suffering, right? Improvement, growth, mm. right? Then uh, if we, if that intellectual masturbation or thought that human beings have developed does not lead to that. And let's say if in fact it brings more misery because sometimes knowing more can actually lead to more pain because now we're exposed to more of the dark side of things that may happen in the world and how life could perhaps be meaningless and go into this dark rabbit hole of nihilism, then I don't know. Is that the point of it? Is I that mean, the point yeah. of philosophy in the first place? Yeah. I mean, that itself, that itself is also could be construed as a, as a wisdom that, you know, more knowledge leads to more pain. The best way to live life is to live without any, uh, without any uh, worries. And so you don't actually have to take in all this extra worries you know what i mean but like i mean at the end of the day like i think i i definitely agree with you like the now what is like critical because like and i mean like we've seen like if you're unable to sort of translate that in any meaningful way what is the point because it's like you know that that's at the end of the day what what so what our, how outcomes change is by someone you know looking at something answering the what the so what and then putting them into action exactly and i'm now curious to see what gzek has to say about the end and then yes. I would be interested to see how it does this do. change what we are doing? Because, mm. you know, our logo or our banner is wiser together. Some of wisdom we are pursuing and whatever we are saying could also be like sort of yes. wise in a way, right? All yes. these philosophical dialogues. So how yes. does this change things for us moving forward? That might yeah. be a question to explore after yeah. we listen to Vijay. Yeah, for sure. This is a wisdom. And if from no one else, from your Kierkegaard, you can learn this that whatever jesus christ was he wasn't a wise guy so tell me brother what i guess summarizing the whole video what came up for you what did you think so so in summary i what i think zizek is saying is that anything can be spun off as wisdom yep. whatever we say if we have the right way of saying it it's it's not about what we say it's about how we say it then it can be spun off as wisdom we can sell yep. that idea as yeah. whatever we want to sell it as right mm -hmm. it's about how we say it, not what we say yeah and so in that sense if everything is wisdom and if we start thinking about what we spoke about this is to summarize that uh creating a duality going to non-duality the space in between all this shit can be wisdom and even saying that can be wisdom and then we get to the point that what's the point of this right like the, the now what do we shall we turn this uh, sort of philosophical engagement and contemplation and dialogue uh, and and conversation does this get to any point because if it, mm. this, this is all just a bunch of wisdom mm. then what does this mean for us mm. what does this mean for us trying to be wiser together and yes. trying to spread this wisdom should that be something we continue doing or is that all a bunch of intellectual masturbation that has no real point and meaning mm. Yeah, definitely. No, I completely agree. Um, the only th the the only thing I would add to that is like making that distinguishing the disting distinguishing between the point of like no matter what you can say can be justified. It's also that the actions that you do can also be justified. Like um, you know, for example, like if you were to get in like a relationship with someone and you break up, 
on one hand, you could say the, the, the justification for your action could be, you know, in order to, in order to be happy, you have to, if you, if you love the person, you have to let them go. Like there's like those like wisdom, love traps. And then also like there could be on the other side, like, or in order to make an omelet, you have to crack a few eggs or something, you know, like there's so much wisdom there, but any action that you can have can be justified. So it was just mainly just the distinguishing between um, what you're thinking and also the actions can be justified. Just but as but well. now what does that mean? Every action can be justified as in like even that sentence, if we can break that down, mm. me, it can be perceived in so many ways, depending on yes. the way you think, right? Any action can be fucking justified, bro. Like, do you feel me like anything you can do and justify it? Yes. Makes it sound like, damn, I just did really something really fucked up. Yes. And like you, you're implying like, no, you can't justify it. Just stop using this wisdom yes. to justify it. On the yes. other hand, yes. I could also be like, oh yeah, man. And for that reason, anything we do can be, can be justified. Like everything happens for a yes. reason. You know what I mean? And that could be like a way to see it where, you know, everything just is and everything, uh, uh, can be like we can understand it we can empathize mm. with people we can spread more love and joy and and you know just unionize we we might go along yes with that. yes so it depends like oh i'm wondering when you say everything can be justified yeah what so, way do you mean everything can be justified? yeah so in in the sense what of like that? yeah so in the sense of like i mean i think it's important that like to make the, the uh, it, it's important to note that when you make decisions you arrive at those decisions because of reason right Whereas if you arrive at a decision because of wisdom, that's a very different thing, right? So for example, if you say like, I'm going to, I'm going to like go swimming in a pool or like if, if I'm, if I'm in the ocean, right. And you don't want to drown, you, you know, you would um, use your like reason to think, okay, like how long should I spend in here? Well, if I get exhausted, will I drown? Like you come to like using logic and reasoning, you sort of arrive at a, at a logical conclusion, right? And so in that way, it's slightly different to saying, okay, if I want to drop my law degree, like I was saying before, um, and like my mentor came up to me and he says, stop making, uh, stop thinking that there's a right or wrong decision. There is no such thing. Every, any decision you have is inherently, will have inherently right and wrong elements to it, but there's, a, there's no right or wrong decision. So that is like using a piece of advice. It's like adv getting solicited advice from people and then using that as the basis of your decision. So this is like slightly different to using reasoning to come into the basis of your decision. Well, but isn't it not too different because basically what wisdom is, is a lot of learning and reason that, okay, if you do X, then Y will happen. And mm. if you do this, then that will happen. Uh, reason, right? Like logic. Yeah. Like yeah. Consequentialism. And like that thing, that knowledge gets like quoted almost. It like keeps on building yes. and becomes more and more complex and like, simplified yes or maybe like like shortened like coming to the essence and that basically turns into wisdom yes like so, years yeah. of knowledge yes turn it's, into it's like wisdom. it's like uh all this reason and logic built on years and years and then it's turned into like a sentence and so right, it's like, like a meme. It's, it's, it's basically yeah, a meme yeah, yeah. for a bigger yeah. much broader answer yeah uh, that's so then all, basically then all wisdom are memes and if we were to go with memes as in not internet memes but uh, Richard Dawkins memes, then we basically don't even control this wisdom. This wisdom comes through us. These ideas flow through us. We don't have these ideas. We don't own this wisdom. We don't come up with this wisdom. This wisdom takes over control. It, it is what has us. These ideas have us. We don't have these ideas. And in that sense, there is nothing much we can do about it, but rather just keep on sharing whatever it is that is coming through. Mm. Because that will, that again, maybe sounds like wisdom, but yeah. that increases complexity and allows things to flow and yeah. constantly be in motion. Yeah, no, I, Does I, that make I sense? yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so in, in regards to like how, like perhaps wisdom is like codified, like, like it's like the core piece of logic and reasoning that's like amalgamated over like a lot of time. And then it's like condensed into a short sentence and that potentially being logic or reasoning itself. Um, so I guess what I would say to that is that I think, so, oh, I just had it. Fuck. <laughs> I swear to fuck God. I literally just had it. Oh, fuck. Wait, let me think of it. Hold on. It'll come to me. Okay. Yes. Um, oh, wait, no, I lost it again. Fuck. <laughs> when you don't think of it, it comes. Bro. That's what yeah. I'm saying. You, you don't, if we try to okay. get wisdom, 
Right. Yes. It, See, it when you don't pay attention, me. like when I'm saying something, like it'll come back. <laughs> it, yes, it passed through me. So, um, so I think the distinction between using reason and logic and maybe like wisdom being construed as logic is like, I think the main distinguishing element is that one may be able to be like refuted or like debated and one cannot. So for example, like, um, for example, like, uh, uh, so Zizek said in the, in the, uh, in the video, like he says, um, those who risk will prosper. Right. So on like, on a logical basis. Okay. So like you could use like finance as an example, like you could look at like who, those who invest more money on average, get more returns. Right. But so in, so you could say, okay, that's logical reasoning and you can apply that and that's wisdom. And so I would say, yeah, definitely. But that is within the context of finance. If you would apply that same reasoning outside a, in a different context, right. For example, in hospitals, right where let's say like uh, there's a surgery that's going on. Um, there's a surgery that's going on. There's a 50% chance risk that if you conduct the surgery, that something will go wrong. You don't have to conduct the surgery, but you could, right? And then you, you, your doctor assistant comes by you and say, you know, I was watching some Slavoj Zizek and he said, this quote is, is fucking brilliant. He said, those who risk will prosper. Like, why don't we save the life of this person? So like on one hand, this is absolutely true, right? Because the wisdom, the wisdom, it's, it's, it's wisdom because it's wisdom, right? It's, it, it provides some inherent value. But this, but on a, like, if we just think about this purely logically, that wisdom may have derived logically from finance, but that doesn't mean it will derive logically in another context. So I would say it has to be, be able to, it has to have some element of being refuted. So like, if you were to say that to a doctor, right? Oh yeah. Those who risk will pro prosper. Like you can't really refute that. Like you can say, okay, yeah. Like someone, someone will die, uh, may die if I do this, but like, there's no way to sort of disprove what that person is saying. Yeah. Like sure. Someone who risk could prosper, but it's slightly, it's like a different calculation to what you would have in like finance where you can actually calculate the risk or whatever. I mean, it's a sort of a, I'm not, I'm not too sure if I'm being clear or not, but yeah, it's like, yeah. Was, so there's two types of things. One is that which cannot be refuted. And one is that, that which can be refuted. And I yes. think the thing where that can be refuted is driven by context. As in, we can say risk reward, as you mentioned in finance yes. means one thing, but that same piece of information, that same meme, that same piece of wisdom means something very different in a different context. And so another element, so the, the idea of context here, that knowledge is contextual, that which may be valuable in one context may not be in another, but also the flip goes true as well. So what wisdom in one hand may make sense in one context, i.e. a given time and space, in another space, point in space and time, that wisdom might be completely bizarre and random and weird. So in that sense, what Zizek is saying makes sense that anything can be wisdom depending on how you say it and what the context is. And I think the point that I at least make of it, yes, everything can be wisdom depending on the context. Yes. And I think if we can align the context with the wisdom, then that's no more intellectual masturbation. Then there is yes. actually a point to it, but yes. maybe that yes. is also just a bunch of wisdom. I guess. Yes. I mean that, that in that itself. Can, yeah. I mean, yeah, I think these are all really interesting points. It also like brings up questions of like, can anything like it, it, it sort of brings up sort of like existential questions for me, maybe not existential, but sort of just questions about life in the sense of like, um, uh, for example, like, you know, is, is everything, every piece of advice or knowledge or everything that I learned, is that inherently like a false wisdom? Like, is, am I justifying my actions based on false grounds? Like, is everything I'm doing like sort of based on false, um, oh, ideas, okay. but, but I don't think, yes, that, but that, also at the no. worst, at the worst level, like, I'm not saying that it, is the case, yes, but it like, can, yeah, right. I, I think it is ultimately because we can go on that take that it's all bullshit. It's all wisdom is bullshit. And none of this means nothing, mm. which is the nihilistic take, right? Yes. Nihilistic existential take. On the other hand, you could say the opposite, which is that no, 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 this wisdom. Yes, it is inherently meaningless, but that actually frees me because mm. now I can give it any meaning yes. and I can use that random piece of information or meme and apply it to my own context and contextualize mm. it where I am 
and turn that into something else. And that mm. I think is what philosophy ultimately is. It's taking one thing from one context in one place in one given time and mm. then extracting that and making new meaning of it in another space context yeah. and, and point in time. Yeah. And ultimately, I think like a more interesting question for me, given that everything is contextual, all this wisdom, right? Mm. Maybe right now we sound like, oh, wow, right? We masturbate our own minds and stroke yeah. our egos. But some, some other people in a, uh, another place, maybe at watching, who may be watching this in another time, right? Wherever mm. they do, if they do, I wonder what this would mean to them. Yes. As in how this context, this may make sense, but in another context, it may make no sense. Or yes. flip. In this context, right now, none of this may make sense to us. But in another context, to that other person, it may make a lot of sense. And they're like, mm. holy shit, why didn't we think of this before? Mm. The answer was right here. So mm. the question again, we've been sort of like going round and round and in, in, in yes. this now what? But yes. now I actually yeah. want to get to now what? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I think that's a good place to like end things, like figuring out, like asking that question. Um, so like for me, like the immediate thing that comes to mind is like what we talked about previously in other podcasts and like, different times is like being like a child in the sense of uh, intellectual curiosity and like understanding things and trying to really understand things. And like what I mean by that is like, like uh, adopting that sort of Socratic notion of like, I, I know nothing, right? Um, and trying to like really try to understand whatever is presented in front of us and not presuming that there's any like, like not presuming that you know everything, even if you, even if that is like the feeling that you have and just trying to be as intellectually honest with yourself by like being really critical and skeptical of even your own notions of confidence. Like if you feel like you know something, I would then like challenge that again and be like, well, like how much do you really know? And I feel like that allows us to sort of question even wisdom itself, because even if you know someone that is like of a, maybe like a really, like a really like great intellectual rigor, they're really smart. And they say like this really eloquent thing to you, even having the skepticism or not even skepticism, but even the critical thinking and be like, okay, but like that person aside, does this on its own stand up on its two legs? Like in the context that this person's telling me, does this actually make sense? Uh, that was what I would take away from this video. So, so, so let me add to that. I think three things come up for me. One, does that make sense? If it doesn't, then what can I do for it to actually work for me rather than dismissing it or making my own life miserable? Second, it brings humility because sometimes we assume that we're not good and like these people who are really wise and say all these eloquent things with pathos uh, are wiser and that may make us feel inferior. But if we have this sort of shift in mindset that you just said, then it brings a level of playing field. It brings us to a space where we are more humble or maybe it's like more confident that no, maybe what I'm saying also could be true. I don't have to take this person's thing as is because now this, this could just be a bunch of bullshit. It's just wisdom. So that, that dynamic, it, I think it also changes. And the third thing that comes for me in terms of being like a child, I agree. But also to remember that a child doesn't get obsessed in trying to understand it and fix it. A child will be, oh, wow, curious, right? Awe. Oh. And yes, that curiosity will drive that child. But ultimately, if that is getting that child nowhere, if it's giving it nothing, it will just be like, fuck this. It'll just move on. Whereas I think the mistake at least I make is that I get held on trying to find the truth, trying to find the answer and being right about yes, it. Yes. And that being there is a truth. Right. And that there is a truth, yeah, a whole other topic. But, but I think what I take back from what you just said is that being a child also means letting go and not being held on to it, to this intellectual masturbation and curiosity. And uh, yes, yes, for sure. Absolutely. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, and I think like perhaps to wrap all of this all up together is that even our takeaways about what to do about wisdom can inherently be uh, wisdom itself, which should also be taken with a grain of salt, considering that we've just watched a video that is all about opposing wisdom. And so like even the whatever we take away from this, I think that should be uh, critically examined as well. Like if, yeah. So we are so the next Slavoj Zizek and Socrates. That's who we are, guys. <laughs> Yeah. You, might, you, you should uh, take us with a grain of salt because we 
that's what makes us uh, wise, you know, because we say take us with a grain of salt. Yeah, some fucking fruit juice. Sorry, seriously, uh, can I give you some fucking fruit juice? Or I coke? love some fucking yeah. fruit juice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you seen that video of Zizek? It's fucking funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want some fruit juice? I will get you some. Or some shit like that in his home. Yeah. But I think that's everything. I think, uh, I don't know. I don't know how long that is, but um, I think that was, a interesting, that was an interesting take. I agree, brother. That opened up my mind in many ways. Yes. It's always a fun, a fun activity to intellectualize. I've missed it for a while.